Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are back again with Mr. Ramesh Chandra Joshi. Mr. Joshi is a postgraduate in economics from Lucknow University and is currently working as the principal of LK Singhania Education Center, Gotten, Rajasthan. The school is affiliated to CBSE and is a co-educational K-12 boarding school. Mr. Joshi is teaching economics to the senior classes for the past 30 years, 30 plus years, and he is considered as one of the best economics teachers in the country. We are proud to have Mr. Joshi with us. He has been the resource person for a number of workshops, seminars conducted across the country and abroad. Mr. Joshi is the executive committee member of Indian Public Schools Conference, IPSC, since 2009, and also worked as Joint Director, Games and Sports, IPSC. He has also authored four books of economic subjects for the students of classes 11 and 12 CBSE board, Statistics for Economics and Indian Economics Development for class 11 and Microeconomics and Macroeconomics for class 12. He has been selected for the coveted CBSE award for the year 2005 for his contribution in the field of education and also honored with the Best International Principal Award 2016-17, Principal of the Year Award during Indian Education Congress 2014 and Uttarakhand Ratan Award 2015. Mr. Joshi is a great sports person as well and a very fine cricketer. As an economic, as an educationist, he has been to a number of countries like Germany, Switzerland, Britain, and UAE, to name a few. Let's welcome Mr. Ramesh Chandra Joshi. Good evening, sir, and Namaskar. Namaskar. Ji. Sir, um, my usual question, like you've been following all my talk series, my usual question, what brings you to education? Uh, before this, Reena, I congratulate you. You are doing a great job. From last number of days, I am following you. And you are not only picking particular topics, you are having variety of topics. And I congratulate you doing this for all the education fraternity. For me, I started my education from a, one of the well-known school in Nanital, that is Birla Vidya Mandir School. And then I went for the higher education to Lucknow University. As uh, teaching is my blood, because my father was a teacher and he served for approximately 35 years. And when I completed my PG, then I realized that somewhere I can be a good teacher because I keep on taking the tuition classes because I, I'm, I'm from the middle class family. And I realized that uh, I enjoy it because if anything, any profession you enjoy, you get interested, you incline more towards it. And that's why I went for the B.A. And I started my journey as a teacher from G.D. Birla School, Rani Khet. And I joined this institution in 96, L.K. Singhania. And I'm more passionate about it. Even today, if I'm a principal, I would love more to be with the student in the class. It is not only teaching economics. Whenever we interact with the student at, of the teenage, it is a great learning with them. So that's why... Teaching is not profession for me. Teaching is my love. So nice and very well, well said that teaching is love. And so it is like for all of us, most of us rather, I would say. Uh, sir, uh, like as far as I have known you and as far as I have read about you uh, through your words, through, the, uh, through your synopsis, through your biography, whatever it is, what I have come to know is that you are an expert in boarding school. Yeah, that, I, that, that would be the proper because since the very beginning you've been in boarding schools. Yeah, from and, my first uh, of my career, I am working with the boarding schools only. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, would you like to throw sh some light on what your life in boarding school has been like? Because, uh, as you said, you you love interacting with teenage kids. You love interacting with children. So, when you first joined the boarding school, how did you feel and? What were your experiences? Uh, see, I myself have education from the boarding school. And uh, in the boarding school, the best part is we interact with the child throughout the day. It is not that we are for eight hours or seven hours only academic exchanges with the children. 
we stay with them uh, we enjoy fooding with them we dine with them we play with them so it is a type of a family so the attachment we able to get with the boarding schools like a child is joining us in class 4th and 5th and is staying up to class 12 it is a family for the ch child also so that bonding that emotional bonding is very impactful in boarding schools that i feel and that's why we stay connected more strongly with our children i can correlate with you because i have also been to uh, india's best boarding schools i've been to sindhya kanya vidyalaya and uh, dahil girls school darjeeling i am a product of both the schools so that uh, i can understand and i can uh, visualize the words yeah. you have said you yeah. uh, know playing with the teacher in the evening time and you that can say your best part sir and and uh, during that play only we used to learn you know yes. it was not only playing it was not only playing it was also learning i still remember uh, i was very young when i went to boarding i went in class i was in nursery i guess when i went to boarding so uh, our teacher during the e after the tea break in the evening we used to go in the field and there she used to tell us okay now do one thing we, i'm giving different tasks to different kids you go and collect pebbles somebody used to collect pebbles somebody used to collect twigs somebody used to collect those small small strings lying on uh, on the ground and then she used to tell okay now make heaps of pebbles that you got and now start writing words or alphabets or numbers with that so it still remembers you know because that was something which we experienced and we believe me, yeah and believe me what you learn outside no that learning pay you even in your professional life by 95% what you are doing inside the classroom it's impacting only by 5% and that's why i am sharing with you when the child is staying in a boarding school he is not only learning inside the classroom his learning is very important outside the classroom when the child is engaged among the teachers so now i get another vote for experiential learning yeah yeah true 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 thank you so much sir sir let's come to the topic today uh, today we will be talking uh, talking about post covid 19 hallways of priority strategies in school education sir uh, first i would like in fact rather i would request you to throw some light on this topic Uh, yeah ma'am uh, see if we look into the past like uh, if you we go before march 2020 and if you just uh, go in one year back or two year back all the educational institutions uh, i will focus more on boarding schools we are looking for getting the green school certificate because that time we talk about green campus and of a sudden lockdown was imposed in march 2020 and then we started thinking about wifi campus because only way of teaching was we have to shift from chalk talk teaching to the teaching through technology and today if you look into all the educational institutions are really working hard in providing education through online where the technology plays a very impactful role but my worry is that if after 3 month or if after 4 months government permits us to reopen the school that is about the future that how we are going to work on it whether we are ready for it what are the precautionary measures we have to adopt and then i say past was about the green campus present is about the wifi campus but future will be about virus less campus because once the in march 2020 when the lockdown was imposed all the institutions worked hard in providing education to their children through online because initial lockdown they were having this thing in a mind after 10 or 15 days the things will be normal but when the government extended the lockdown period everybody started working on it and initially it was a very panic time but today if you look into to some extent all are adjusted when i am saying all i mean the school the student and the parents and all the institutions are working nicely by providing the education whether they are using google meet or they are using microsoft teams or zoom whatever they have the potential accordingly they are working on it but my worry is that if government permits us to reopen the school after 3 months whether we are ready or not as a boarding exactly. school that is in fact one of the main concerns also sir be it uh, like even the uh, no, uh, the day boardings or the day schools 
they also need to be uh, ready with all these things apart from residents residents and uh, in the uh, dining hall like everything is there except Very for cool. residents and in day boardings they do have uh, dining halls also yeah and i interacted with the some of the parents also because i put the same question to the parents how they feel and i found them in the three category one category which is very less number of percentage of parents they are ready you reopen the school they will send their child but their percentage is very less that that they are approximately 10 to 15% and the second group of the parents they are looking for the first group they are just waiting let the uh, some of the student enter in the hostel and they adjust there and after that they will go for the decision but a big number of parents that is a real threat to the boarding school is not only boarding school, not only boarding school sorry to interrupt this is hmm. a threat for all educational institutes because most of the parents they are not willing to send the students to school yes, reason, you are right. being, reason being they are all, all of us are scared you know uh, like uh, what we, must, we can control the kids they they are with the yeah I I have I have I have seen them raising the slogan that till the vaccine is not in the system we will not send our children to the school. But the vaccine is not a, you can say immediate solution if we are not going to get and we have to reopen the school certainly we will have to work on it and we will have to rebuild rebuild the trust of the parents. So how exactly. to make our campus safe? How to ensure to the parents that my campus will be a virusless campus because see. if you are talking about social distancing and we are saying that once we'll reopen the school and we'll ensure social distancing uh, what is social distancing in document in my opinion uh, practically it's a type of illusion because once the kids are inside the camp when we adults are not following that social yeah. distancing how can we expect the kids to follow it do you see when we are in the family inside how much social distancing we are maintaining so if we think that we'll able to maintain the social distancing while running the school during the recess time when the kids are in the classroom teacher is not there in their free time in their playing time it is not possible at all we can go up to 10 to 15% but 80% will not able to maintain that social distancing which is in the documents so now what is the remedy i feel the remedy is we'll have to keep the virus outside the campus and over this only i worked i just gave my thoughts that how we can make our campus virusless what are the strategies through which we can keep covid 19 out of the campus this is my idea behind the discussion uh let's let's start uh, discussing about it because this is quite an interesting and a very informative session that we are having today because uh, all the most of the hello yeah amen yeah. very uh, most of the kids who are in the boardings they are still uncertain what is going to happen yes it is a state of confusion moreover exactly. see it started from the month of march because when the lockdown was imposed everybody was having that after 15 20 days the things will be okay that again we are in the month of july but still nothing is decided how we are going to operate the things but still, even we, are, we, are not, we, we uh, like uh, we are not aware what will happen uh, yes. in one of the interviews i uh, i heard our honorable hrd minister speaking that after 15th of august we will be deciding what has to be done but yeah, i don't yeah. think, i don't think even after 15th of august even if there are uh, like earlier there were that the uh, remaining board exams will be conducted but ultimately they were cancelled yes but my idea is that uh, we will have to go for the preparation in advance as a boarding school so even if the school are going to reopen somewhere in september or october then also from today onwards we have to work on it that how we are going to make our campus safe for our children for our staff so in this regard my first thing over which i will address is how we are going to make the reporting of our school staff and supporting staff because in because boarding school are, many of the boarding schools we need, to be, we need to be trained also yes also yes trained first of all their entry because exactly. they are 
from different places many of them are from maybe from the red zone some are from the green zone some are from the orange zone so when they are going to enter in the campus we have to look into the remedies through which at least we have to make them to stay in the campus for 15 20 days before the arrival of the students so therefore quarantine we'll have to quarantine them there yes, yes. Uh, like for an example even in my school i have made my teachers to report in the campus uh, one month before and we have to keep them under compulsory quarantine home quarantine for 14 days and then also when they are going to resume their work they have to take the permission from the resident medical officers and at the same time few of the things which is from the legality point of view staff members to download arogya setu staff who do not directly support student services can work from home like office staff there are number of support staff also where direct uh, service is not given by them to the student so we can make them to work from home shift work and split work part time in offline office and part time at home are increased in the lower density of personnel then another is telework is increased for those position able to perform job function remotely and the finally what you said is very important is training part before the entry of the student all the support staff and teaching staff must be trained properly that how they are going to handle once the students are in campus so sir uh, uh, after the staffs uh, staff has arrived we've decided that okay we will be um, making them compulsive quarantine for 15 to 20 days whatever time we set the management is the mm -hmm. final authority to decide upon yeah. it so uh, so once the training and all starts first of all uh, like uh, we will have to make uh, make them uh, aware that the situation we are dealing it's not easy and once everybody is here the kids especially because we have to keep them like a uh, egg in a nest yeah very true very true rightly said we have to keep them like a egg in a nest and that is where because they will be coming out of the house after almost 4 to 5 months and that is a big yeah. big time and, period and mental health is a great concern that's what i was coming to that's what i was coming to because their mental health is really being affected and we as adults we need to handle them very cautiously because the moment they enter it's going to be the most difficult task for us and before this what yeah before this my point is how to make our campus ready exactly because, uh, we have to work a lot number of things sanitization the deep cleaning of the entire campus deep cleaning of the boardings deep cleaning of the um, um dining halls kitchens washrooms everything because yeah, the entire building has been locked for such a long time yes you're very true and even i just i mentioned that it, suppose you are taking the vehicle in the campus so how the sanitization to be done door sanitization handle sanitization key sanitization in classroom deck sanitization markers door window handles and these all must be documented and proper exactly. training given the people who are involved in the process of sanitization because the basic objective is to keep the campus virus free because once it enters then it will be very difficult to control yeah. it so it is a initial stage for any school to look into that how to maintain the process of sanitization up to up to the mark and for this all the support staff must have a good training in this regard right so sir uh, like when we are talking about the campus readiness yeah uh you i'm i'm definitely sure you might have made a blueprint of it yes yes i have done it i have the person that. you are the person you are the uh, as i know you you definitely have made a blueprint for it yes. so when we are talk, talking about the campus readiness so how are you going to manage it because the support staff they are they are uh, not that trained to do the entire deep cleaning and everything see very uh, will not be having those machines which are required for deep cleaning and every uh, deep cleaning scrubbing vacuuming everything 
how are we how are we going to man manage those logistics see the first thing is that uh, no doubt the finance is a very you can say uh, crucial thing at present for the school but still the school will have to work over the budget and they will have to keep the special finance for the covid 19 where they will have to go for the purchase of the equipment very much required to face this deadly disease and then comes what is your worry is that is very much right that even if you train your support staff you arrange different type of works uh, workshop and give them all the you can say what are the safety norms explain everything give them a written document that is also in hindi but then also how to motivate them how to make them the realization that what is their role and how much impactful it is and for this what i believe that what works is called emotional bonding in the place of giving only information about the precautions against the covid 19 the best part is to make them to realize that their role is very important under the present circumstances and at the same time there is requirement sorry to interrupt in fact i would say that the entire responsibility you being the head of the institution it's going to be yours and it will be like it will be something like um, because the head of the institution is head of the family and it's a legal responsibility moro exactly exactly so therefore uh, what I, we can do we can go little bit we can go for the decentralization of the things we can make the think tanks for the different areas like for an example first entry is at the school gate then the child is going to enter then there are different wings in the schools like hostel mess academic block playgrounds and for each area we can develop the think tank a group of teachers who will be really working over it and there is a proper supervision supervision is required it is not that you assign the duty no, and you sir so not only supervision even proper coordination coordination yeah among the team members is very much required and the information may be very you can say it in a transparent way everything must be properly mentioned and explained to the people who is handling the duty like for an example if you talk about the protocol in academic block including staff room that i have made it like from some of the protocols i'm just sharing with you housekeeping staff to not to come face to face with the school staff and student that is that to be taken care an effective protocol for wearing masks to be formulated no study material has been touched by others to be carried home back in this regard we can have the strategy that what they are keeping in the school that must remain in the school whether it is a student material or staff material and what they are keeping at home that must remain at home or what they are keeping in the hostel that must remain in the hostel in fact i would suggest i would suggest that you, they can have the scanned copies mailed to them yeah very true very true either can, they can have two sets but that is expensive affair so what you suggested is very much right just yes. yes, just scan it and send it everybody yeah, yeah. because because of covid 19 everybody now possesses a laptop Very, or they are very, operating, or they are operating from a desktop or their mobiles, and these very, days uh, smartphones are uh, office Microsoft Office ready. Very true, very true. Why don't they have everything? Yeah, and then it is better for teacher to wear face shields rather than uh, mask because my worry is that a student may be a career, but the main effect is to the teachers who are fifty plus, because when the student are coming in the campus, they are not. having the symptoms but they may be carrying it and when the, the teachers is going in the class of 50 plus or age teacher that is my worry so first of all my advice is if possible we can take those teachers away from the classroom and we can make them to do the needful from their residence only for a time being for the coming 2 3 months to avoid any unwanted situation and at the okay. same time it is very much clear that even if you reopen the school your 100% strength is not coming to this still many of your student will be staying at home so those student still will have to give them service through online so an other very important thing is that no sharing of books and notebooks and alcohol based sanitizers not to be used in labs as it is very dangerous because uh, femiple possible gel based gel Sanitizers or Savlon or 
these things can be used there yes 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 and sanitization of files and folders this is very important no use of biometric this is very important because maximum schools are having biometric exactly instead of biometrics uh, rfids can be used that can be used or no sharing of stationary computers because many time it happens the sharing of computers there maximum school in one computer one desktop two or three student are sharing it that all to be avoided because yes, the, after every use after every use it has to be sanitized yeah because the basic objective the school had will have to keep in mind that in the place of social distancing i have to take care of the virus in the campus right sir so what would be uh, what uh, what would like uh, what we were uh, we've already spoken about the gate transport and administrative pro protocols yeah. right what would be the guidelines for parents that is the most important thing uh, for the parents very very much right and uh, now see uh, uh, as i said yeah, i will focus on the boarding school because primary education already given by the parents to their kids while they are staying at home so what are the precautions to be taken while the child is at home that all has been done and children are well versed about it because parents are taking care of them every day in the morning how to go for the hand wash what are the other things to be taken care of, and how they have to use mask when they are going outside the you can say residence but when they are starting their journey to the school during travel that is very important and that guidelines to be given to the parents ki when the child is starting the journey from the home to the hostel more we can say home away from home that time the few of the guidelines which i feel are important that they must be told they clean their hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds that guidelines must be given to the parents that they must share with the children they should carry a hand sanitizer avoid mouth eyes and nose we call it men keep 6 feet of physical distance from others they should not pick up food at drive trots they can avoid it they can get the food from the home only and then up to the school gate they have to manage the things in between they should not use the services of restaurant and they should bring good amount of medicines for their journey because many of the student might be coming from far places and in the place of public transport if possible they should use the private transport and better they should use their own vehicle and the parents should not be permitted that they should enter in school the premises once they left the child at the gate from there they will have to go back because if once you make the entry of the parents then it is very difficult to avoid such situation where you avoid the entry of the virus in the campus so such type of initial guidelines must be given by the school to the parents that how they have to make the traveling of their child from home to the hostel so don't you think uh, a covid uh, test should be there in the topmost uh, priority list reason yes. being because um, once the vaccine is out 100% will be all of us will be issued uh, health cards so, uh, yes and if suppose the government permits and provides the covid test we can ask the parent to let the child has have first covid test and then he can start his journey from home to the hospital if it exactly. is possible because under the present circumstances it's not possible but hopefully after 3 months or 4 months if we don't find the vaccine at least the test possibility must be there so that we are 100% sure the entry of the child is with the negative covid yeah because that is also one of the most important thing only sanitizing hands uh, using your personal vehicle that's not going to help until and unless we because generally what when we were in school uh, normally whenever we went uh, went to the boarding we had to carry a medical certificate and reports with us medical and, reports and, yes medical and we will be looking for willingness form uh, we have, we have designed the willingness form for the parents also where some of the informations are there which to be filled by the parents and self declaration form is also required that we all the in, in in fact we can call it an indemnity bond as well yeah i'm not using the word bond because sometime when we use the word bond that goes to its legal aspect so in the place of that we have used very soft word willingness form 
that is only change of the word but what you said is same is the one and the same thing yeah yes sir so and then uh, about so like um, apart from these mm -hmm. any other specific guidelines you know when where the parents can start preparing from home right way, right away from today itself if uh, most of your parents are uh, listening or seeing us on youtube because uh, only people who are there but my my account is public anybody can view it anywhere so uh, like if the parents are viewing us any uh, like not only for your school for other schools also uh, what precautions and preparations should the students start doing and the parents inculcating in the students preparation for joining the boarding back yes uh, see uh, whenever i interact with the parents no there the first question is how you can ensure us that your campus is a safe campus and for this the important thing is that we have to give regular feedback or re regular we have to interact with the parents about what the things we are doing in our campus and how we are going to prepare ourselves and regard of the students now how they have to prepare first is about that they have to give that confidence to the children because as a parent if you are not confident so you will not able to give the same to your kids because you must understand you know that the importance of boarding school and you must feel that you are uh, when you are sending your child from home certainly the receiver is also equally worried about the care and concern of your children so they will be making all efforts the way you are making efforts at home so first i wish that my parent must have this confidence and that faith over the school and at the same time when you have got that confidence you can equally you can supply it to your children also and every day before the child is going to report in the campus you have to spend some time with your children you have to discuss about this problem and you have to discuss about that what are the precautions they have to take because as a parent what you are going to advise to your children certainly they will work on it the only thing is that how you are going to advise it and what are the necessary steps to be taken and how they can keep their, themselves safe and sound the rest is they can leave on the school because when the school is accepting the children in the campus certainly it is the responsibility of the school to take care of each and everything and they will work on it all the boarding school at present they are working on all these issues only the only thing is that it is not a responsibility of one it is a responsibility is a combined responsibility and uh, the best thing is that parent and school they will have to extend helping hand to each other and then only we will able to come out of this situation and whether the this problem is going to stay or it is going to out that god knows but if it is going to stay longer the only thing is that trust on each other and that trust building will motivate our student to step out of the houses now see today after the lockdown over the people are resuming their work because there is no other alternatives left so same is there in terms of schooling also we will have to and at the same time we must understand the risk of this disease over that teenage is very less that is also there the risk factor is less the only thing is that it is rebuilding that confidence no doubt when we talk as a parent it is not so easy that you are going to make your heart to move out of the home and it's not a easy task but it's still that confidence building will start from school to parent and parent to student this way it will work so the prime responsibility of the school to establish that confidence among the parents so i get one more point for my words parents and teachers need to work hand in hand for the betterment of children very true very true right you said naming each other teacher ne ye nahi kiya ma baap ye nahi karte it's not going to help yeah if if we, we if we are blaming each other we have to move out of this blame game yeah we have to move out of it and the school must have a very clear cut policies like for an example if parents are asking that how you will start the boarding of the children you must have a very clear cut answers about it 
so that you can ensure that you are very you know, working with the strategy and planning you cannot say let the school reopen then we'll decide so it means you are not working on it like for an example if you ask me ki sir how you will start the boarding of your student in a school because i have got more than 800 boarders so in one go i am not going to give them entry so i must have a proper planning in this regard for an example i decided first i am going to give the entry to my board student 10th and 12th because this is very important here for them the rest of the student are going with the internal examination and when they are coming like for an example first i am calling on my 12th class i am going to keep them for the compulsory quarantine for 14 days and then only i am going to make them to move around in the campus and then i am going to call class 10th and then again i will keep keeping the class 10th under home quarant uh, school quarantine then i am going to call class 9 then i will call the class 11th step by step will be moving and then see how we are going to make their boarding arrangement generally if you visit any boarding school and you are from boarding school in senior hostel there is a mixing 11th and uh, 9th and 10th and 12th they all stay together in the boarding house yes, but exactly. what is my, what is my planning that for an example 10th class student they will be staying in same hostel they will be dining in the same mess and they will be stay, studying in the same class and their games time will also will be same so that group of the student is not getting you can say you can say physical interaction with any other group 10th class is separate 11th class is separate 12th class we have to minimize it we cannot bring it at zero as i said initially the social distancing is not possible but we can adopt some strategies through which we can ensure that to some extent we are maintaining it which will be helpful in keeping this disease out of the campus exactly because uh, see when we are in the family if one catches a catches the infection the entire yeah. family catches so we will have to make the entire school a family by quarantining quarantining them and once they are quarantined then definitely things can start working because um, you are being a completely boarding school there will be no interference from outside so the yeah. carriers will be minimized and daily once your staff is coming in let definitely it's like uh, they won't be let in without scanning and boarding school will have to try to accommodate maximum within the campus to exactly. avoid minimum entry from outside because entry will be there vendors will be coming because you cannot have the material inside you exactly. have to get the food in stuff fact, from sir, i would suggest i would suggest once the students are in school they they leave uh, the boarding for the classes so uh, once the cleaning is done after cleaning the uh, the entire boarding should be sanitized yes very much and that is in the you can say routine basis in the morning as well as in the evening because yeah, that is the out for playing once yeah. they go out for playing and they are back they need to be sanitized and i i i would suggest uh, sanitizers installed outside the boarding once they <laughs> at at the same time the sanitizer must be available at the different places also exactly. so that we, we can bring that habit like for an example outside the classrooms, outside the classrooms mm -hmm. once the child is out of the washroom after washing hands they yes. they have to use sanitizers before entering the dining hall even today i don't have borders but i have more than 200 people in my campus my all staff is in the campus and now what is the outcome of it the keeping sanitizer at different places people have developed that habit whenever they are moving around they are finding sanitizer is there they will go and sanitize it and even small kids of the age you can say will surprise 6 years or 7 years see what happens in the society we learn and we practice what we are founding among our seniors Exactly. When they find the elders are following the practices, even in the small even evening time, small kids they all move around keeping the mask over the face. So nobody is forcing them. They are learning it from the environment. So my my you can say idea is once we start doing these practices and that will followed by the teacher, by the support staff, by the administration, automatically student are going to follow it. They, yes, they because children learn what they see. So, sir, uh, here, uh, here we have spoken about the guidelines for parents as well. 
Now, uh, what would be the reopening scenario if I come to it? Because, uh, in fact, this is going to be very insightful and very informative for nearly all the schools and nearly all the boarding school owners. Because at some places, there are boarding schools with day scholars in them. There, there will be three questions immediately when you say reopening scenario. The first question comes when to reopen. And the second is for whom to reopen and with what health and safety precautions in place. So reopening, though, government will have its fixed date, but it vary from school to school. Till you are not ready to reopen yourself, you should not go for the risk. Because many times what happens in a, you can say, you know, in, as a teacher of economics, in capitalism, the only objective is earning profit. And we are so, you can say, quick in taking a decision that without looking into our preparation, we go for the decision. Like for an example, if my campus is not ready, I have not given the proper training to my teachers, support staff, and it takes four, 15, 20 days more, I have to wait for it. It is not that others have reopened the school immediately without any preparation if I'm going to reopen the school, that if anything goes wrong, it will be the responsibility of the head of the school. And as I said, it's a legal responsibility. So therefore, because you are keeping the children in the campus, so first, you have to ensure the safety in the campus. So you have to be very careful in reopening the school. And second, the question very important, which I said, for whom to reopen? You are going to reopen for the students. And with the student, you need a big army there in the campus. And then your infirmary, your hospital, or you can say your medical facilities, you have to be very careful about it. That see what happens generally in boarding schools, that uh, dispensary is for the you can say very you can say uh, regular routine medical problems but if suppose any injury is there any fracture is there then again you will have to send the student outside so therefore this readiness is very much required like for an example you're asking about the re reporting scenario or how the students are going to report so in this case as i told you first preference will be given to the 10th and 12th class students but here also I have mentioned some of the points like we can make that student, we can identify the segment of the student who are having the problem. Even today, there are students from the rural India, from the rural places, and they find the problem of connectivity. So we can give them preference and we can call them little early in the campus. Because you cannot, you cannot bring all the student at a time. You can also call the students whose parents are involved in essential services like police services, medical services, those students because they are not getting the parental support at home. So they can be given preference of calling in the campus little early. So they can be given care of the school. So this is the strategy to be adopted. It is not that in one go you call all the students. You must have a strategy who are the real in the need for. And they should be given first preference, like I said, board classes, the student from those places where the connectivity is the problem, the student from those families who are involved in providing essential services, doctors, or you can say medical uh, police services, and there the parents are not time to, because online classes is not run by the teachers only. Online classes are run by the parents also. So especially the student in class fourth, fifth, and sixth, their parent has to stay with them while the online classes are in progress. But those who are uh, really working hard for the essential services, those parents are not available at home. So we have to look into such segment of the student and they should be given preference once we are reopening the school. So, but, but uh, right now, the biggest question is, when will we reopen? Uh, that, that is, that is <laughs> see, I, I have the opinion what the parents feel so that uh, let the wait for the vaccine right now i'm talking right now i'm talking as a parent when will the school yeah, reopen that's what i'll say uh, see till the uh, uh, see uh, this is a very difficult question i will say because even the government is not able to solve this uh, question but my suggestion is that someday we will have to prepare ourselves if we are not going mm -hmm. to vaccine i am very positive person may possible within month or two if we get the vaccine or if we get the 
COVID test facility, then we can think over it. But till we are not going to have the COVID test facility for every individual, we cannot take risk of reopening exactly. this. Exactly. Uh, sir, uh, like uh, we have been talking about how things are going on, how we are going to be make our campus virus, red, uh, virus free, how we are going to train our staff, how we are going to get the campus ready, how transport and other things will be monitored, how we will be reopening and how, what would be the strategies. But sir, right now we have missed almost five to six months, right? A very, uh, very crucial thing. Whereas we are, uh, we can say, we are more concerned about the percentage of it. Uh, right? See what, yeah. Most of the parents, most of ah. the parents, percentage of our children should not be less than any other way. If in the prelims, 94% of the kids come, if they come 93 or 92, then they get a good start. Very true. Why did they get Now, in this scenario, what will be the condition of those students, in fact, not students, parents, who are in the percentage rat race? Uh, you, you see that uh, I don't think that it is going to affect more because uh, those who are good performer, right, uh, they, their, uh, their practice for the self-study is very strong. I, I, because I myself is a teacher and that I realize that even if I conduct the online classes, I'm finding the response of those that is tough is still the same because they are more in the board classes. They are self learner. You are also a mother in my, you might have this experience. If your child is good in studies, he or she needs only direction. They need only direction because their basic foundation is so strong. I'm talking about the bold student because the percentage game is with the bold student only that uh, in 10th class and 12th class. So the parents, they know very well, if the foundation is very strong of your child, then your child is requiring only direction, whether he is going with the offline class or online class. So in offline class also, the children, they, they have to follow direction to online class also, the same thing is happening that will not dent more over their percentage. My worry is not about those children who are good in academics. My worry is about those children those who are not able to perform well not good in academics ma'am and at the same time they have more abilities for the extracurricular activities sir uh, i i think i can throw some light on this because <laughs> these kids they are excellent in other activities right but the problem with them is their way of learning and perception is completely different yeah so how are these kids going to cope up with this five to six months of loss this is the problem. See what we have done. Uh, we started the online classes and my worry was my yoga team because those students were missing. Because if you ask those students to come and report morning at 4.30, 4.30 dot, they will be on the ground for the yoga. But if you ask them for the evening class at 5 o'clock, they will try. So yoga is their main food. Like same, those who are interested in music, those who are interested in fine arts, and how they might might worry was uh, their stay at home. We make them to stay inside the home without serving these all things. I start. Exactly. I started. Those children, those children who are excellent footballers, excellent cricketers, they are tied up in. The, they are just locked inside the four walls, and their energies are just piling up. They they are behind because their parents. In fact, sir, they have great gained weight. They have uh, uh, their sleep pattern is completely disturbed because the energy inside their body they do not let that energy does not let them sleep until unless their mind is completely tired, and that is why they are restored to either movies or online games or uh, YouTube or all sorts of these things. So what so I start is exactly uh, main concern is how to get these kids on track. Yes. And I was sure that because such kids have great connectivity with their coaches, you will find 
the footballer will be very much nicely connected with the football coach cricketer will be very nicely connected with cricket coach so i started their morning online classes simply oh. for fit so here in our campus every day my uh, sports staff they spend one hour online for the fitness and yoga classes they are engaged and same for the fine arts and music also we are running online classes in the evening for the students though they are spending more time in front of screen that is the negative part of it but at least they are getting little bit about that particular area in which they are more interested so we have so, a question from mr niranjan singh he says great planning sir but what about day scholars in a boarding school who could be a potential carrier as we can isolate the boarders but isolating day scholars will not be that easy possible yes but with a lot of cooperation from the parent side what would you like to say niranjan you have got a very nice question because mine is a day come boarding school so i have not only boarders i have got a day scholar also but till this threat is there we will have to look into the alternative ways that how we can make that separation because i am not in the favor of separation i don't want that we should have a separate day school or boarding school but under the present circumstances because day scholars daily going out and then coming in so and gate sanitization will be there but we cannot make the possibility zero so what i have decided that is my view other school can have their own view that we have two blocks in one block will run for the day scholar other block will run for the boarders because i said even among the boarders i have made a division 10th class separate 11th class separate 12th class separate because if there is any possibility if i am saying that my campus is virus free but if suppose virus enters and if one particular group is affected the possibility of saving other groups is very high if suppose it is with the border then we will able to save our day scholar if it, it is with the class 10th we will able to save our class 11th and 12th so that's why for the day scholar also because every day they are going out and coming in in the place of mixing them for the with the border for a time being till we are not out of this threat we can have either an odd even type of school one day for the border one day for the day scholar if we have got Uh, scarcity of the place but if we have got a wide campus we can keep one campus junior campus for the day scholar and senior campus for the boarders and there we will have to look into the faculty also because the next question is if suppose english teacher is there he is going to teach day scholar and boarder so he will be the carrier if suppose it comes from day scholar exactly. it will go to exactly ha uh, so in that case if we have got good amount of faculty we can make that division also otherwise we can make it alternative days right sir so uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, boarding houses the mess and the laundry as well yes because laundry will be going out of the campus laundry will also remain inside the campus in my case but in many of the boarding school it may be going yes, out of yes. the campus it does so it does it does right. go like right. it's once a week that the dhobi comes and he takes uh, the laundry and then in 2 3 days he brings it back some so of the back, point, yeah first i will be sharing your yeah, points related to boarding house the house team should educate and orient the student of various precautions and guidelines that need need to be strictly followed so it is a house effort because it is a complete team when i say house boarding house means house master is there assistant house master is there house mother is there house attendance is there house sweepers are there they have to work as a team so they must be properly educated along with their boarders and they must be aware about do's and don'ts the student should be educated on showing empathy and understanding to keep a check on their mental physical and emotional health this is very important and this is more possible at the boarding hostels only because they are staying with their house mother they are staying with their house masters and as i said earlier that they are coming after a long period long stay four months five months so one worry is about the safety other worry is home sickness so there they need mental physical and emotional care and that to be given by the hospital in charges ensuring that the student follow the accommodation plan in houses designed for their safety proper accommodation plan is also required as per the guidelines which will be forwarded by the hopefully by the government 
otherwise each school has to make the accommodation plan where you have to keep the social distancing in the front because boarders are staying in the room then you have to decide because earlier four boarders may be staying in one room that time the social distancing was not a worry but once they are in the campus now today you cannot accommodate more than two boarders in the same room where you are accommodating earlier four boarders same about the dormitories where you are accommodating earlier 20 students if same you are going to do so you are going to call the problem so therefore you must have a accommodation plan and that to be followed by the each member of that hostel the school should ban any gathering or use of common rooms in the time being because all the hostels have their common room or assembly time is there in the hostels also assembly there hostel parties all those things to be banned where the possibility of gathering is there there should be marking at the floor as per safe distance protocol at the entry and exit gate quick fuse or whenever student might assemble whenever student are assembling there should be a proper marking and they must be addressed that this is a marking you have to follow because many time you have to call the meeting or some emergency cases where you have to make the student to assemble that time that marking to be followed any medical issue should immediately be reported that to be taken care and student must be given a, pro, a particular uh, type of document in which some of the questions to be raised questionnaire to be given every day they look at that um, uh, the 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 preparation that you have done the guidelines and all you know, the staff arrivals and everything i think you could uh, make it a manual you know a manual yeah. and then send it over to all the parents and uh, students as well there should be separate manuals for parents and separate manuals for uh, students yeah properly and, nicely drafted yes, and yes. documented and that to be given to the student and parents well in advance so yes. that they can go it thoroughly and they can adopt that practice and my suggestion is those practices must be done at home by the child under the supervision of the parent so that exactly. they, that will come in their practice so once they are in the hostel they because, are in the house. because for 5 months they have enjoyed whatever they wanted yes i'm just they have, I'm, they have been sleeping they have been sleeping till afternoon they have they are awake all night it doesn't matter much because they don't have to go to school yeah at so the now, same time i think it's time now i think it's time now sir that uh, we as parents also need to start bringing them back to routine because any time uh, like hope, hopefully uh, any time the schools might open you you see when i started this uh, morning classes yoga classes i invite the parent also so many of the parent especially the home bakers they join their kids so the basic objective was to bring the children in practice this is the responsibility now of the school that how you, because what as a educator what as a teacher i am guiding to my child he or she will follow more than their parents nowadays because many time it happens parents make a call to be ki sir guide him or her she is not very much serious about the online studies or she is not serious about the morning classes so school can play a very vital role it is only that how you connect yourself i am saying even if today as a school as an administrator i connect myself with the parents tomorrow the same parents will show the trust over the school it is not about that we can make uh, unilateral it is a bilateral issue where the good cooperation good understanding is required between the parent and between the parent and school that is very much required exactly it is a time when all of us have to support each other for our child well being so sir uh, what uh, like uh, i now we we have to come to the s and uh, yeah. the laundry as well mess is a very you can say concerning area the first thing is about the health check up of the mess employees each employees health check up must be there because there is a problem that Uh, uh, many time it happens uh, that they are not that much concerning about the things a little casual in their attitude so therefore there should be a proper check up done by the uh, dispensary staff under the super supervision of the mess in charge and that must be ensured from the rmo uh, your doctor that all have gone through the proper medical check check up and they must be given the advisory that is and it is not that you just give them a document they must be given that practice of 10 days where how they have to go for serving 
what are the precautions they have to take to maintain the social distancing the mass employees must be educated on cleanliness and hygienic hygienic protocols to be followed that is very important they must change into the fresh pair of clothes upon arrival for the duty every day every day when they are coming they they enter they must be a room for them where they can change their clothes and then they enter in the dining hall or in the kitchen area where they are going for the cooking and once the work is over then again they have to change the clothes that set they have to send it for the washing and other set they have to wear because in the mess area the two things are very important one is hygiene other is cleanliness the school should try to reduce human intervention as much as possible in handling the food and utensils we have got the utensil cleaner machines we have got the chapati making machines so we have to go for more use of machines less use of you can say uh, uh, human labor i am not saying that we have to reduce the numbers we have to make somebody unemployed but for a time being a school can invest money over this so that we can minimize the uh, human touch in the food material because this is the area from which the possibility of spread of disease is more rearranging of mess furniture as per safe distancing norms you cannot have the mess sitting arrangement what you are having uh, before lockdown you will have to look into the social distancing norms and accordingly you will have to make the arrangements in the mess proper distance of 2 meter is required and serving self service can be avoided we should go for the table service so that minimum you can say touch human body touch will be possible because when they are going for the self service the students are standing and taking the food then it is possibility that they can touch each other and even the uh, touch is possible through the mass employees so if you want to avoid it we can go for the table service and sanitization as we discussed earlier wherever it is required whether it is inside the mass once they are coming they are finishing their food after that sanitization is required for the dining they are coming after that again sanitization required so in terms of mass my idea is the basic requirement is cleanliness and hygiene uh so so what about the laundry part laundry see we have got a system of kit bag so every child must have a kit bag of two pair so when they are keeping what whatever their clothes they are wearing and once the dirty clothes every day they must be given the practice of keeping in the kit bag and kit bag on it depends upon the school if they are going to send twice in a week for the laundry or once in a week for the laundry and those kit bag must be kept by the student himself there should not be minimum entry of the house attendant inside the dormitory or inside the room give the practice to your boarders to perform maximum work of their own so that they can they will be in the need of minimum human help and that will avoid the that touch part and they can keep at at the prescribed place every saturday or the day fix those kit bags and that will be taken by the house attendant or if you have got a laundry man he will be collecting it the transport he is using that must be sanitized properly and then if as you said if if your laundry is inside then there is no worry it can be done inside only but if it is going outside then you have to be very uh, you can say particular about the things so when it is going out that time then after when it is everything is done from the laundry the clothes are ready when is going to enter then again you have to go for the sanitization proper and you have to keep the those clothes for 2 days or 44 hours in the sunlight so that you can reduce for any infection and that responsibility to be given to the house attendant that is the extra work to be performed so that because clothes are coming from outside there is a possibility of virus but if it is kept under sunlight for 40 48 hours that will be zero i think this information was quite helpful and i guess uh, most of the schools uh, they should follow the same uh, same pattern in fact the same guidelines and uh, if need be uh, like they can contact you as well for helping them out i am i am very much uh, you can say happy to provide them all documents they can go through that document because this is the system vary from school to school they have got their own limitation we have got our own limitation but if we have got one uniform uh, document that can be helpful 
in adding or subtracting for everybody. Right. For yes, everybody. right, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing time for this uh, wonderful, uh, insightful, and informative session. In fact, I found it quite interesting because um, while listening, I was going back in my boarding days <laughs> because we used to do a lot of uh, same uh, See, rules if, and regulations. If you spent uh, 20 years in a boarding school and you are in the school from last four months without children, it looks like you are a gardener without flower. So we all are eagerly waiting for our flower. Let's pray almighty that things get on yes. the normal track and we get our student in the campus with this. Uh, I'm thankful to you for inviting me. And really, it was a, a nice interaction. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, Thank you. sir. Thank you. So here we end our session for today. Tomorrow, we will be having uh, Mrs. Akanksha Tyagi. We will be having Mrs. Akanksha Tyagi. She will be throwing some uh, light on unlock the rhythm of life and reprogram your mind. Thank you so much and Namaste.